Hey guys, we're gonna go ahead and jump into setting up the basic airplane model. Uh, we've given you a little idea already in the intro on what we plan on doing, so we wanna go ahead and get straight to it. So to set up a new model, we're we'll jump into the menu, click on model, and scroll down to new model and select that. Uh, first step is giving it a name, so we're gonna go ahead and put in what, we, what we'd like. If you make a mistake, you can hit the backspace key and just re-enter that letter or enter a new letter. We'll go ahead and put this in here. We're setting up a little fun cup today. So we'll go through and put these in. Once you have the, num the name as you like it, see I made a mistake, so we'll go ahead and Click our backspace, make the letter change, and once you're finished, you can click OK. Select the type of model. In this case, we're going to choose arrow, and we click our forward key. We are not going to be changing the color profile. We're adding a background image. So we will move forward. Our wing type for today is a two aileron, two flap wing, and a single horizontal, single vertical tail. Uh, if you had a multi-engine aircraft, you can change that below. Uh, using or building an aircraft with uh, retractable gear, you can add the number of gear servos. And if you're using an external gyro, you can activate the gyro one, two, three. But we are doing none of the above, so we'll skip forward. Uh, our basic controls are all correct. We're going to go ahead and change our flaps to a three-position switch. Uh, we do this. Let me scroll back to the top for you. Uh, by highlighting the line, clicking the 3D button, scrolling over to the control and clicking the 3D button again. We're going to click on clear and we are going to move the three position switch that we'd like to move. And it's working in the opposite direction I'd like it to. So I'm going to go ahead and click reverse. Now my positions line up with the values I want to see. So we're going to click OK. We're going to click forward. Uh, you see the system has already assigned channels to each of our outputs. So we're going to go ahead and click through it. It asks you if you want to create and activate the model. We're going to click yes in this case. And that moves us on to our servo setup screen. Uh, at this point, you would be plugging in the servos according to the servo assignment menu. And here you would be ready to actually adjust those servos. Adjust your endpoints, your sub trim. Uh, and uh, any reversing that would need to be done. So we're going to go ahead and on this model, I know I've got to dial a little bit of sub trim into my flap on the left wing. So we're going to go ahead and just dial a little bit of sub trim into this so that we've got it. And there we go. And that's all you would need to do. I'm going to leave my endpoints alone at this point because I know my travels are fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. Uh, we are not going to be pairing the receivers right now. So we're gonna go ahead and click on No. Now from here, we're gonna jump into the next menu. So we'll click the menu button again. We'll scroll down to fine tuning, select fine tuning. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is set up dual rate on this model. So to do that, you click on, scroll down to dual rate click the 3D button. We're going to start with ailerons. So in this case, I know I'd like to set up uh, a single switch for dual rates on, on all three axes. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down to switch, highlight switch, click it again, and move the switch that you'd like to use. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we're going to go ahead and set our values. You hit escape, so that you can move lines. We're going to go up to our rate. Notice we have position one, position two. So my position one is going to be my low rates. So we're going to select it. 
Uh, it is symmetrical unless you click the symmetrical button, function button one at the bottom of the screen, it will make a symmetrical adjustment. All right, we're going to use that and we're going to add about 10% expo at 70%. And now we're going to go ahead and flip into our position two, which is going to be our high rates. I want that at 100%. We're going to go ahead and add 20% expo to this particular rate. Um, what you would do then is you would click OK. You would go into elevator and go into rudder and do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and bypass that for the sake of speed. But you can select the same switch in each of those or select different switches for each axis. So the next thing we want to do is we want to work on setting up our butterfly. So in butterfly menu, first thing that you're going to want to do is assign a control. That can be a proportional control uh, or a switch. So we're going to go ahead and click on the line, click on control, and I'm going to move my SC switch. Uh, again, it's working reverse of what I wanted. I want the forward position to be my off so i'm going to click reverse and i'm going to tell it okay we're going to go ahead and add our delay in before we make our adjustment this actually slows down uh, deployment and retraction of those butterflies so we'll set that line at one second and we'll go ahead and hit escape to unselect the line jump into our aileron and flap adjustment and go ahead and set this one up. Um, having set one of these up before, I know the value that I would like to li like to use. So we're going to click on the line. We're going to select to adjust, and we are going to dial in about sixty percent. We're going to escape to leave the line. We're going to scroll down to differential. And we're going to add in about negative 5%. Escape again. And for our flaps, we are going to use, oh, let me jump back in there. We're going to go ahead and select it, select the value, and we're going to use 100%. Because I have it set up for full travel, we're going to use full deployment on the flaps in Butterfly. So we'll select 100%. Click OK. After testing, you realize that you needed some elevator adjustment to compensate in the flap. You can go into the butterfly menu, click butter the elevator adjustment, and add a specific value. Uh, I know in this case with butterfly, it doesn't need it, so we're going to leave that alone. And we're going to jump out of that menu. And the last thing we want to do, because we have flaps, is I want to set up a free mix. So we'll go into free mixes. We're going to click add. And in this case, we are going to mix from our flaps to our elevator. And we're going to add a master value of a minus 15%. Once you've set the value, you can go into the advanced mix, um, give you a couple of, of Clues here, we don't want to add a switch because this is a mix I want active all the time. Anytime flaps are coming down, I want that elevator compensation. Uh, but you can add a switch if this was a unique mix or a, a moment, you know, momentary only kind of mix, you can add a switch. You can also make adjustments to the curve. You can verify your mix by going into your servo monitor, that's function button two from the, the edit screen. If you hit the refresh button in the center, function button three, it'll actually show you by name which of the surfaces are being moved. So when we hit our butterfly switch, let's say you can see those moving. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy my flaps and just make sure we're getting that compensation as we should. So we have flap one, flap two, moving through the, the range and we have our elevator mix working there and that's our basic setup for our mix. You may have to do some fine tuning depending on what mix you're doing 
Uh, to do that, you can scroll down, set single direction, set a custom curve, and really dial in the mix you ate the way you like it. So we're going to go ahead and escape from this screen and move on to our next setup. We'll go ahead and hit escape one more time back into the main menu. We're going to jump into our timers, or our, sorry, our advanced properties menu next and I'd like to set up a throttle cut. So in advanced properties, we're going to click on other model options. We're going to scroll down to throttle cut and we're going to assign ourselves a switch. So you're going to select it. Uh, we're going to throw the switch. Uh, this is a three position switch. I don't want to use that. So real easily, you just hit clear and move the switch that you would like. I want my throttle cut when my switch is towards me. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse the switch. I'm going to tell it OK. We're going to go down and verify, verify the output value for that. So uh, with my stick in center position so I can see some value, I'm going to come off of my throttle and make sure that does what I need it to do, which it does. So we're going to then uh, make adjustments. Oh, I do want to mention if you're running a gas airplane, uh, you need to go into the monitor and take a look at what that value is to equal throttle close. Because if you're setting up linkage on a fuel airplane, typically your minus 100 will not be what the value uh, needs to be that's entered into the system uh, because of uh, binding and limits, you really need to take a look and see what that closed position is, and that's the value you'd enter into the throttle cut. So we'll go ahead and move on into our next selection. So we'll hit OK to escape from other model options, and we're going to go down and we're going to add a sound on event. So click on sound on event. We're going to click add. Uh, in sound on event, you enter a switch or a control a sound file and any delay on that file. So we're going to highlight the line. We're going to select the switch. We're going to ahead and put a sound on event on our throttle cut. Once you have the switch you'd like, you click OK. Go to your file and you can scroll through the list of files. Uh, once you get to the end of the page, you click next. It'll take you to the uh, next list and We'll continue all the way through. Well, we're going to go all the way through until we find a file that we like. Let's see, what do we want to use? We'll go ahead and use warning just for fun. If you want to hear a preview of the sound, warning. You can click the play button at the bottom, which is function button one. Uh, if you decide you don't like that file, simply you can select, work your way back through the menu, and choose a new file. Uh, very simple system to use, very simple setup. And something I do suggest if you're adding a lot of unique switches or you're not used to the model or you're not sure what you've put in in certain switch positions, adding these sounds on events will allow you to know what you've activated or deactivated by hitting that switch. Uh, once that done, that's finished, you can go ahead and jump out of this screen. And by hitting escape, we're going to click OK, and we're going to move on into our next menu, which is going to be timers and sensors. And we want to set up a couple of basic things. We're going to set up a basic timer. So that's the first thing we're going to do by going into timers, clicking add. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit the timer that was existing. Uh, we want to go ahead and run a countdown timer of five minutes. The first, first set of numbers is hours, then minutes, then seconds. Uh, don't want you to go ahead and put five in the first column because uh, you will definitely run out of battery or fuel. So we'll leave our target value at zero. So we'll escape from this line. We'll scroll down and use a standard timer. Standard timer means it'll start and stop at uh, whatever you use for a key switch. Free running timer will not stop the timer 
uh, when you hit that switch. So we're going to go ahead and go in and we're going to select switch. I like to start my, my timer by using my throttle. I'm going to go ahead and reverse that input. So as I throttle up, my timer starts. When I get back to, to the bottom, it shuts off. And click OK. We're going to make sure that the report type is set to voice. And we can jump out of that timer. That is now finished. Next thing we want to do in timers and sensors, we've escaped all the way back to the timer and sensor menu. We want to go down and set up a little bit of display telemetry. Uh, it defaults to setting the timer on the screen, but we want to add a couple of other things. So we're going to click the add button. We're going to use system and we're going to scroll down. First thing we want to do is put our antennas. Uh, it asks you if you want to use double size. If you're only going to put a couple of things, you can use that. If you're not, go ahead and select no because we're only doing a couple of things. I'm going to select yes. So I want to put my antenna. And the other thing that I want to add, I'm going to click add, go into system, but I want to use my receiver voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and select receiver voltage and tell it yes. Once you finish that, you can go ahead and click OK. It'll take you out. We're going to escape all the way back to our home screen. And you can see both our antenna strength and our receiver voltage, as well as our timer. You can verify your timer is running by throttling up. And we have a good run on the timer. And when I come back off throttle, the timer stops. If you want to clear the timer, you can just hit the clear button, function button 5, under the screen. Well, that does it for your basic setup. Uh, any questions or anything on what you've seen, don't hesitate to reach out to us, like always. And thanks for spending time with us today.